Hi, welcome to the Euclidean Geometry 101 course. This is part 2 of the series, and here we will introduce the chapter about angles and a third Euclidean postulate. Angles. You will encounter them everywhere in your life and in the world. Whether it's shooting a shell from a tank or a simple arrow, the angle at which the projectile starts its flight determines all. Constructing a house or a pyramid, if you want it to keep standing up, let alone look pretty, you better get your angles right or you might get into trouble. Tiling a floor, sitting on a chair, it will all go a lot smoother and better if you have at least a decent understanding of what angles are and what they allow you to do. In the first episode of this series, we introduced lines. Taking that as a starting point, we can now define the angle concept. Starting with the line AA prime, we can choose a random point O on it, which decomposes the line into two parts. We call one such part a ray with O as initial point. So a ray could also be called a half line. O is called the end point of the ray. We call an angle the figure formed by two rays, called the sides of the angle with a common end point. In this case, the end point is called the vertex of the angle. The two rays are called the legs of the angle. A little intermezzo about notations is in order. We use capital letters for points, like A and B. A line can be noted with a lower case letter. A line segment can be called by its two endpoints, like AB. An angle can be no denoted by three letters if it consists of two segments, angle ABC. It can also be denoted by simply using the vertex point, the angle B in this case. This is only advisable if there is no ambiguity possible, as there can be multiple angles using B as their vertex. A last notation for an angle is a lowercase letter with an angle drawing. We will now introduce the different kinds of angles. Firstly, we will define the notion of adjacent angles. Look at the figure. M and N are called adjacent angles, because they are angles with the same vertex and one common leg. OA and OB are here the outer legs. Opposite angles are angles of which the legs are in line with each other. Example, angle M and N or angle P and Q. When one line stands on another and has adjacent angles at both sides that are equal, then we call the line standing on the other the perpendicular on that line. Perpendicularity is noted by a special symbol. The point where the two lines touch is called the foot of the perpendicular. We call those angles right angles. Right angles are also often drawn with a square angle drawing. With this definition of right angles, we are now ready to talk about the third postulate. Actually, it's the fourth in Euclid's Elements. The third postulate says that all right angles are equal. It is somewhat of a controversial postulate, as some have claimed that it should be a proposition as it could be proven. But in the literature, it can be found that to prove the postulate, you actually assume some other stuff. It all comes down to knowing when two angles are the same. As we don't use any measurements in synthetic geometry, there has to be a rigorous way to determine the equality of angles. With this postulate and the definition of right angles, we can now propose a first proposition in this series. The proposition goes as follows. In a point on a line, one can erect a perpendicular, but no more than one. 
Let's first prove that there is one, and after that, let's prove that there is only one. Ok. Let's draw ray OA beginning in O on the line BC. The ray OA forms two angles with BC. If the two angles are the same, the proposition is proven. If the angles are not equal, then suppose angle N is bigger than angle M. Let's rotate the ray OA around O towards OC. M will increase, N will decrease, and eventually become even zero. Logically, because N was first greater than M and now smaller, there will be a position for OA where the angles DOB and DOC are equal, and that is the definition of perpendicularity. So by definition, OD is perpendicular on BC. There is only one such a line, because before the position of the line M is not equal to N, and after that position M is again not equal to N. Now, some more definitions. An angle that is smaller than a right angle is called an acute angle. The term acute means sharp here. An angle that is bigger than a right angle is called an obtuse angle. An angle of which the legs are in line with each other as two rays on the same line is called a straight angle. That's it for the first lesson about angles. Next time we will continue with some notions about supplementary and complementary angles. If you like this series consider subscribing to my channel.